Getting back to India, Islam will first appear around 712 in current day Pakistan and move through northern reaches of India. In fact, this is where we tend to see a bit of a split where we see Islam predominantly in the north and Hinduism predominantly in the south. Although at first they only desired trade, Islamic rulers will gradually transform southeastern Asian society and consequently their art. And one of the great examples of Islamic architecture in India is going to be, of course, the Taj Mahal. This is a monumental tomb. And the interesting thing is monumental tombs are not part of either Hindu or Buddhist tradition. In fact, they're not part of Islamic tradition either. Um, so in this case, these sultans are taking these ideas from Central Asia. Think Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, etc., where you do have very small-scale tombs that will look very similar. And by small-scale, I'm talking something that's maybe 12 feet tall and roughly 10 to 15 feet wide, not something quite the size of the Taj Mahal. And the sultans of Delhi had erected tombs, but nothing anywhere near this scale. Again, that very small, more of a mausoleum, a small mausoleum than the Taj Mahal. That is until Shah Jahan, J-A-H-A-N, who built the Taj Mahal as a tomb for his favorite wife. Of course, he will eventually be buried there as well. The problem is he designs this massive structure and has it built. And eventually it turns out that he's a very poor ruler, so he will be imprisoned. And he will simply watch it uh, be constructed. His wife will be buried there. And originally, there was going to be a black version of the Taj Mahal next to it, which would be his tomb. Of course, that's never going to be built, so he will be uh, interred in the Taj Mahal as well. And this is basically a dome on cube. It is very common for mosques and Byzantine architecture. So we've got that dome there. We've got the, cu the cube beneath. Uh, it also has this very weightless vision of white marble. And this is increased by all of these reflecting pools, which you can see here. Uh, the use of the reflecting pool is specifically to give it a sense that the Taj Mahal is, in fact, floating. If we back out, this is what it looks like. There are no visible stairs to the upper platform, to uh, this platform right here. And that is to hide some of the utilitarian aspects. There's supposed to be a bit of an air of mystery to this, almost as if it's particularly perfect. And it followed the plans of an Iranian garden pavilion, except the building is not in the center of the garden, but in fact, the whole thing, the whole complex of the Taj Mahal is at one end of the garden with the river, obviously, at its back. The pointed arches are meant to lead the eye up to the dome, and the minarets and flanking pavilions enhance the form and control the vision. And what we're talking about is these pavilions off to the side. In fact, the Taj Mahal is an awful lot like Disneyland. So we've got our pavilion over here on one side, and over here on the other. And what they try to do with the Taj Mahal is control how you see it. So if you come in through these entrances, uh, the whole Taj Mahal will be framed in by these massive entrance uh, gates. As you come in, you're faced also with a reflecting pool where you'll see that reflection of the Taj Mahal. And of course, the minarets obviously aren't necessary. They aren't practical because no one's calling prayer at the Taj Mahal. It's a tomb, not a mosque. Now, when we look at the Taj Mahal proportionally, the height of the dome is the same as the height of the facade, which you can see with these two uh, rectangles that I've drawn in. And that facade is also twice the width of the dome. So we've got these proportions that work out beautifully to the human eye that we're drawn to. 
Now, this may have been conceived, the entire Taj Mahal may have been conceived as the throne of God above the gardens of paradise on Judgment Day. And the minarets may be there not only symbolically to show that it's Islamic, but also to hold the canopy to that throne. So, if I pull out my pen for a second, imagine that we're in a giant sort of four-post bed. And I've got this cloth that comes up over the minaret and then kind of sways down and up over the Taj Mahal. And then the same thing here, down to the minaret, and down. And that would be the throne of God sort of floating above the gardens of paradise. Those minarets creating this veil that would sit above that throne. Uh, so visually giving you a sense of that symbolism. And that would be the most revered place for a burial under the throne of God in Islam. 